Thanks very much, Wendy, and thank you also uh, for your welcome. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm planning to be pretty brief. I'm the industry connection on the program. And uh, I'm going to be brief because I know that I think it'll be more interesting to hear from uh, some of the student experiences that are going to follow. I also don't want to presume to speak on behalf of all the other mentors and industry representatives that are here, but I would like to take this opportunity to thank them on behalf of WISE, thank them for all of their tremendous support and for their interaction and their mentorship uh, over the past year. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Wendy and her team because without them, WISE wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be nearly as effective as it is. It truly is a partnership between industry, although we're not, in my case, we don't really regard ourselves as industry, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, the employers and, and industry representative organisations and the university, it's a true partnership. Now, if I could have the first slide, please, because so that you don't have to look at me, I've put some pictures up. Um, along the bottom there, you can see that in our case, we work very closely with the development partners and the donor agencies that are active in the Pacific region, funding infrastructure. And you'll see that uh, groups like Australian Aid, which is DFAT, the Australian Government Department, and New Zealand equivalent, these are like the bilateral agencies. And then there are the multilateral agencies like the Asian Development Bank that, uh, that Wendy just mentioned, and the World Bank, and the European Investment Bank. These are the multilateral agencies. Now, what happens in, in our, uh, for students when they're looking at these as looking for opportunities? Uh, we just heard Angelo talking about internships, looking for international experience, looking for more information about what do these agencies do and what, what would it be like to work in one of these? I call these the three I's, international experience, internships, and information. The, what happens really is that the bilateral agencies are the ones that do have graduate programs. The Australian government, New Zealand government. The multilateral agencies, I'm housed within the Asian Development Bank, they don't really have graduate programs, but they do have very strong internship programs. And so all of these agencies are really exciting opportunities. If I could have the next slide. When you look at PRIF and our activities, it covers the entire Pacific. Not only are these really interesting countries, but they're very attractive places to visit. And I'll come to that in a moment because there are real opportunities to do that as well. So industry connection, these are, it's all about making connections between industry and the program. And the next slide. So here was one of the very first uh, uh, employer visits uh, with some students in 2015 uh, who came along and I'm pleased that one of my, actually I'd like to not call them mentees. Is there a different word that we could use that uh, describes what I'm the mentor, what's the mentee? Let, um, but these employer visits are really important because they build face-to-face -face contact instead of just always dealing with them on social media or by email or on the telephone, builds confidence among the students, learning from the professionals, giving the ability to be able to ask questions. These people are, like me, hopefully, quite approachable, you know? They're not sort of uh, in big, powerful buildings in big, powerful organisations. They are approachable and there are real opportunities to make connections. I mentioned Amy Balaam, who's in that slide. Next photo, please. This is a real opportunity to sit down with some professionals working in these agencies and to ask them for tips and advice and also for connections. Amy, actually, we facilitated visits for her to PNG. She went to Peru. You just never know what's going to happen when you start talking to people who have a great deal more experience than you and have got connections in these places that you instinctively feel that you are interested in, but you just don't know how to, to make that first approach. If you could go to the next slide. Here's an example. Amy, you know, who went on to terrific things, actually designing technologies that would be really useful and really valuable for poor people in, in uh, developing countries. Not just Amy, I'm very pleased to say that I've been able to be a mentor for Kathy Chen, uh, who also went on to additional uh, mentoring with a group called Advance Australia, 
Sophie Lun Tan, uh, and Michaela, Michaela, who's, who's here tonight. Uh, these, uh, it's been a great privilege to be able to be a mentor for students, such fantastic students who have got tremendous ambitions, talents, and, uh, and real drive and uh, confidence to be able to explore some of these opportunities for not just employment, but just personal experience and personal development. If I could have the next one. One example that we were able to facilitate was working closely with Wendy to do a study tour or to help Wendy to facilitate a study tour for students going to Fiji uh, last year. And we've got some examples of people who are there uh, on that trip here, to, here with us tonight. Um, th this was a very uh, interesting and challenging one uh, when Wendy asked us, you know, what, what sort of things do you think would be available to study? And I said, well, there's, you know, this is, it's an enormous field, international development. What I was interested to know was what were the main focus areas of the students themselves? And because they covered quite a broad spectrum, it was kind of important to be able to make it interesting for all of them. And so we hit upon the idea to study, anybody's, any guess? Waste management. It wasn't cocktail. It wasn't co Now's the time for the next slide, I think. So I thought you were supposed to be working when you were there. But to study waste and recycling was really, I think, a very, not only was it interesting and it was multi-sectoral, but it was actually very topical because this is probably one of the most pressing issues that is facing the Pacific and all of us uh, at the moment is, is particularly uh, the, the health of the marine environment and plastic pollution and it's something that all the main donor agencies are really trying to get their head around, how to help these countries, because their economies are really at stake. They're, they're totally reliant on the income that they get from fisheries and from tourism, and pollution is a major threat to those, to those uh, parts of their economy. So the next slide shows what they were supposed to be working on, and that's some of the, just a, this was Wendy's photograph to show just what an enormous challenge it really is uh, in countries like the the uh, like Fiji and other countries in the Pacific that really have very small land base and there's very little opportunity for dealing with waste. So I'm yeah, please go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, this is Noboro landfill just outside Suva. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'll talk to you afterwards because we've got some ideas about how to, how to improve this. Anyway, I'm glad to see that your time didn't go to waste in Fiji. Uh, next slide, please. Um, but getting min maximum value out of this, a study tour like that, it's not just on the tour itself, it's when you return. And to be able to bring the students in and bring them into an organisation like the Asian Development Bank, um, to really Actually, it was interesting because what it did was that it turned the tables because now the students actually had a lot more up-to-date information about what was going on in Fiji than our own staff did. And the, so what happened was that our staff, and not just our staff, but some other industry professionals who gathered for that occasion, like Coca-Cola and others, started asking the students questions. And that was, an, again, an interesting dynamic showed how, uh, what a great learning experience it was to be able to actually engage with, uh, with industry professionals on a one-to-one. -one. On the next slide, please. I also wanted to explain that, you know, everybody that works in international development really works as part of multidisciplinary teams. So it really helps to know what is the sort of the, se the sector or the subject focus, and then we can involve the technical experts to match. And so um, what I would really try to encourage students to do in future is to actually get back in touch with these people afterwards. One thing I found was a bit sort of a little bit of a disconnect was that the students weren't coming back for a second go. Can I have the next slide? But in any case, that's, that's one of the things that the students were learning was about how it doesn't matter whether you're doing engineering or chemistry or agriculture or food technology or environment or medical and health issues, 
there's something in international development for all of them. And the next one. And not only for them, but at the same time as that tour, there was a group of journalism students from Western Sydney University who also went to Fiji and studied a lot of the same issues. So we were able to help them along their journey as well. And the next one, thanks. So that experience of coming back and telling their stories and to try to reflect on their experiences, and, and there's Sophie, for instance, at this event last year doing exactly that. Um, it, it's been, it also shows what a great help it is for them when they move on to then go through the interviewing process for, for, uh, for employment that they can draw on their experience that they develop in this and the next slide, please. And finally, I'd also like to just mention that it's not just professional con connections that industry people can bring, it's also personal connections in some cases. And this slide is interesting for me personally because that's my niece, Imogen Harper, who works with a group called the Umbrella Foundation in Kathmandu, in Nepal. And through Imogen, we were able to get a placement for two students from Western Sydney University to go as part of the School of Social Sciences and for an international placement unit with a, a group, with Kathmandu University and this group. And that's your own Vice Chancellor standing there uh, presenting Imogen just a couple of weeks ago with a certificate to explain how uh, they have uh, supported the program in that respect. So wonderful thanks to the, uh, to the university for that uh, connection. Finally, I'd just like to say that when I listen to my colleagues when they're talking to students, they usually come up with three primary words of advice as part of this program. In international development, Three words of advice. One, get a master's degree. You would very rarely get a job in one of these organisations without a master's degree. Second one, learn a language. A lot of people say, what language? Doesn't matter. Just choose a language and learn it because that's, that's the process they're looking for. And the third one is to get some overseas experience and that's again uh, where we can help. I'd finally like to say, get off Facebook. Get onto LinkedIn. Actually. I'll, I'll go back on that. Don't get off Facebook if it's the WISE program page. <laughs> um, but finally, go and meet people in person. That's really what it's all about, is this face-to-face -face and making connections with industry. Okay, thanks very much, Wendy.